Hi, welcome to Organic Chemistry, and this is about building esters. This is to go alongside the Unit 3 podcast, which you can find at um, the Chemisode website. Um, what I'm going to try and do is change it around a bit more and do a bit more of this video podcasting. So we can do videos, and this way I can actually explain things with aids of diagrams, which kind of helps in terms of organic reactions. So this one's going to be basically around building esters and looking at reaction pathways. So far, I've introduced you to a couple of um, ways of doing reactions and a couple of reactions that we deal with in organic chemistry. This is kind of going to bring all that together and look at it's a bit more stuff about esters in particular because that's, that's where it's all happening really for um, Unit 3 in terms of organic chemistry. It's all about esters. So let's have a look at this. More on esters. As you'll learn in your podcast, esters are formed from carboxylic acids and alcohols that are reacting together. They have two parts, two sections of an ester. You have the first part from the alcohol, from the OH group, and the second part from your carboxylic acid group. Here's an example to show you how the names are derived from these two parts. An example here is we have ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH. This is ethanoic acid here and propanol. Propanol is just a simple three-chain carbon um, with an alcohol group here. When this reacts and forms an ester, what you'll notice is this part here, the OH from the carboxylic acid group, kind of reacts with the hydrogen from your hydroxyl group here, and it will form a linkage, an ester linkage. The ester linkage is highlighted here, and this is known as your ester. So you're reacting the carboxylic acid and the alcohol group to form your ester here. Each time you form an ester, you're going to um, have this OH group here and this H combined together and produce water. This water over here comes from this OH and this H group, H2O. Now, the name of this molecule is propyl ethanoate. Now, as I said before, the names come from the two parts. The first half, the propyl here, comes from my alcohol. This was propane sorry, propanol, so it becomes a propyl ester. This part here was my carboxylic acid. It was ethanoic acid. So in when I form an ester, we change the ethanoic into ethanoate. So the name for the ester is propyl ethanoate. You do the alcohol, gets changed into an ul with propyl, and the oic acid changes into an O8. So propyl ethanoate where you're reacting this OH with this H here, forming your ester linkage. This is your ester linkage. Let's go have a look at um, a bit more information about esters and some interesting facts about esters. Esters can only be formed using primary alcohols. That means the OH has to be at the end. If we go back to my slide beforehand and look at um, propanol here, this is actually one propanol. So it can only form an ester from one propanol. You can't get the OH forming an ester from this secondary alcohol here. It just doesn't happen. So your esters are formed from primary or um, the one alcohols. Concentrated sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst. So in this reaction here, we're using concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst. This is a condition that you need to understand. You don't need to understand it as much as you just need to know what catalyst is used. We call it concentrated sulfuric acid. Sometimes it's given the liquid state here. That just means it's very, very concentrated. Esters have a sweet smell and they are used in flavorings and used in um, the, for lollies and things like that. So if you have a compound that they want you to describe and they're saying it is a sweet smelling compound, chances are it's gonna be an ester. That's just a property that they have. They smell sweet, they're kind of fruity, floral. Esters are very common in VCE. You're always gonna, you're basically bound to get a, a question about an ester somewhere along the line. Couple of things where you can actually identify esters and how you can actually identify if you have a pure ester or whether you've got some of your reactants still there is esters will have a peak at around about 1700 in your IR spectrum. So this is a typical um, spectrum for an ester where we have that peak here or the trough if you will, the um, absorbance at 1700. This is from your C double bond to O. 
you won't have any, so this double bond to O, this can also be seen sometimes in carboxylic acids because obviously carboxylic acids have that double bond to O. The reason that makes these different to carboxylic acids is there's no absorbance here at the OH. So a noticeable difference between a carboxylic acid and an ester is no absorbance at 3500 where you'd expect to have an OH bent or an OH absorbance. Fragmentation in mass spec normally happens, the very stable fragmentation normally happens around this C single bond to O. So this will normally break off in fragmentation. So that's just another little um, tidbit that you can understand. If you have an ester, the base peak will normally be formed from a fragmentation around this carbon single bond to oxygen there. So that's esters, a bit of information about them. Now we're going to look at reaction pathways. Reaction pathways is kind of how we come about and how we make these esters happen. Now, the basic idea is that in a chemical reaction, you're not going to produce the thing that you want all the time. You're not going to be able to do it in one simple step. Chances are you'll be given a really basic compound and you'll be told, what are the steps I need to take to make this other compound? So we need to think about creating a desired chemical based on the reaction that we have learnt beforehand. So what reactions we have learnt and how we can use those to make a kind of a path to create the molecule we want. In general, this is a path you'll be taking. You'll be given an alkane and you might need to make a carboxylic acid. These are all the, the basic um, A to B pathway. You would normally go from an alkane to a haloalkane, an alcohol, a haloalkane to an alcohol and then an alcohol to a carboxylic acid. You're going to need to know how you do this, what reactants are needed and what conditions are needed as well. So often you'll be given just alkanes or alkenes and have to come up with and create an ester somehow. The next slide details an example of this. So let's go have a look at an example of a chemical pathway in terms of creating an ester. Produce an ester poly, sorry, propyl ethanoate using ethene and propane. How do I do that? I need to think about this. I need to, first of all, write down my starting compounds here. I've got ethane on one side and propane on the other side. Now, with my propyl ethanoate, my propyl is coming from my um, alcohol, so it means I need to form propane, so propanol somehow. And my ethanoate is coming from my carboxylic acid, so it means I need to form ethanoic acid somehow as well. Let's start with my um, ethene, my ethene. The first step I need to do is I need to change this ethene into an alcohol. How do I do that? I react it with water and a catalyst. This catalyst is normally phosphoric acid. The reason I need to get my, to my alcohol is because I need to go from my alcohol into a carboxylic acid. And the way that we do that is we oxidize it using dichromate in the presence of an acidic catalyst as well. So we have a pathway to create my ethanoic acid. I knew I needed to make ethanoic acid because I had ethanoate here. My other pathway to create my propanol, because I knew I needed to make propanol because it's propyl, that part came from my alcohol, is first of all, I react it to make a haloalkane. I react it with chlorine and UV light, and that will make my chloropropane, my one chloropropane. This is the first step. I need to do this because I then need to create an alcohol, and I can't just go from a simple alkane to an alcohol in one step. I need to go via this step here of adding chlorine to it first. The way I get from a haloalkane or a chloroalkane to an alcohol is simply reacting it with um, sodium hydroxide, or even just the hydroxide ion is usually enough as well. So what I've done here is a reaction pathway for forming propanol from propane. Then to create my ester, I need to react these two react these two things together in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid or sulfuric acid in a liquid form. So this is my reaction pathway. First of all, creating my ethanoic acid. Second of all, creating my propanol and then reacting my acid and my alcohol to create my ester. This is a generic way of doing things. 
um, you would normally start off with your products. You think about what do I need to obtain and think about the reactions that we know to get to that end product there. Purification um, is where you create a product that you want to create. Um, however, chances are it's not pure. Chances are there's either byproducts that you've created in um, the process of making your compound, or the reaction might not have gone to completion and you still have some reactants left over. Whatever the idea is, whatever the problem is, your reactant will very, very rarely be in its pure form. And this can cause pretty, pretty bad problems. If you, you can imagine you're creating things like um, pharmaceuticals, like drugs and stuff like that, and if you're creating things like um, flavorings for food, if you don't create, or if you have byproducts, or if you have um, your reactants left over, chances are you're going to make someone sick if you don't purify them first. So there's a couple of ways you need to purify them. Um, the first one is fractional distillation. Now this is really good for separating esters um, from the other compounds and this is due to separation via the boiling points of different molecules. The other way, if you're creating um, more like pharmaceuticals and um, the solid products, your best off is your best option probably is for recrystallization. And that's in terms of like melting it and reforming a crystal. What I'm going to deal with now, because we've just done esters, is how we can purify an ester from um, the, re the mixture that you get at the end of your reaction. So let's have a look at the ester purification. Basically, to purify an ester, you need to fractional distill it, meaning you need to boil it, or increase the temperature slowly, and take fractions that boil off at certain temperatures. Consider the following ester reaction. We have ethanol and ethanoic acid forming ethyl ethanoate and water. Now, even with this exact stoichiometric ratio, we'll still have a mixture of ester and water and sulfuric acid. So what we need to do is somehow separate these things out so we get pure ester because the ester can be used then into in your food manufacturing for flavors and smells. Below is a list of the table of boiling points, you can see it here, um, of different molecules. Your ester has a boiling point of about 57 degrees Celsius. Okay, your um, alcohol here has a boiling point of 78. Water obviously has a boiling point of 100 and ethanoic acid has a boiling point of 100 and um, 18 degrees Celsius. What we want to do is collect individual fractions as we slowly increase the temperature. If we get the temperature set at around about 70 degrees or even just a little bit above this boiling point, say if it's set at about 60 degrees for instance, what will happen is our ester will boil off but it will leave behind all these other things here. If we collect that ester at that um, degree Celsius, what we'll have is a pure form of this ethanoic, sorry, this ethyl ethanoate. So this is a way of purifying your end product by fractional distillation, where we slowly increase the temperature and collect pure samples at the right boiling point. Okay, if we just wanted ethanol, what we'd have to do is first of all collect our ethyl ethanoate and then increase temperature again until we get our ethanol coming out. Okay, This principle of fractional distillation, you should have really covered it in um, year 11 when you looked at crude oil, but fractional distillation is a way of separating any mixture of liquids that have varying boiling points. And it's especially really useful in ester production because you can get a pure ester that you can be used for other things. And that's fractional distillation and how to purify your products after you create them. Now we're going to look at yields. So um, this podcast will end and new podcasts will start on yields. Mm -hmm.